Hello and good morning guys and welcome back to another video. It's been a while. I hope you didn't miss me too much. Today I am doing my... It's, I'm super excited. I'm doing my first video in the 5B1C, the 5 Builders 1 City collaboration project. Uh, this is the fourth season and it's actually... Before we like uh, talk a bit more about it, we're actually six builders this time around. So it's actually six builders, one city. But yes, um, anyway, this fourth season will include... Sardis, Slay 3 k me, Imperial Jedi, Canadian Moose, and Cities by Diana. So, and that's also the order of the builders. So, I'm doing this. This is the third video in the in the series, and uh, we'll see how long how long the series uh, ends up being. But uh, we also got guest builders coming up, so it's going to be super exciting to see like this uh, build progressing. Uh, I haven't really showed it, but the previous builds. Uh, the part one and the part two uh, by Sardis and Slay are uh, available in the playlist. I'll link the playlist so you can watch them. That's uh, the sort of the parts that are already on the map. So, so I'm just adding my touch to it. And there's also like kind of a theme going. I'm doing a, I'm doing, um, I'm doing a European style sort of a city here and or city district, you could say. And um, the, the, the sort of setup we have is that one side of the river, we're playing on the, the map with the river. I, I don't even, actually don't remember what, it, what it's called even, but the, the map with the river that goes through a valley. Um, so we have like set up one side of the river is an American, a North American themed city that like free builders will be focusing on. And uh, the other side is the European theme and uh, where I will be focusing. Me and Sardis are on the... So far are on the European side and and uh, slay so far on the American. So um, yeah, that's it. And you can see me. I'm, I'm just redoing the highway uh, because the highway initially on the map just went very straight. It just went like a straight arrow across the map, and I kind of it kind of bugged me a little bit. So I just made it curve a little bit. And um, I've done this uh, before and uh, I'm doing it again. I, I'm doing like terraforming before I'm doing the roads and also like terraforming preparing the, preparing the interchanges. It's something that I think works really well in this game, but I kind of wish I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have had to do it at all, but anyway. Um, it's I've sped up this footage quite quickly as well, so I'm sorry for, for that. I, I got a bit too much, too carried away with the build, so eventually... I build a bit too much and it takes a bit too long to play it back, so I just had to speed up and cut out parts. As has become more and more standard um, for my videos, to be honest. I'm, um, yeah. I haven't released a video in quite a while now, it's like more than a month at least. Um, and I think a big part of that is actually that I just got carried away with uh, what I wanted to record, like what I wanted to make. Like, uh, I've. Uh, mentioned it before and I want to make like I want to complete the Lakeland map and record it uh, to make a video I don't know if I'll actually make a video of it I might just release the map when it's completed and and like maybe summarize it in video but not like show the entire build because it's already so many hours uh, of the footage for that foot that thing it's, it's sometimes just better to like just move on and uh, <laughs> get on with other projects which I have Plenty of other projects I want to do. I want to go back to CS1 and uh, City Scanners 1 and play Milau. M oh, I messed up. I forgot. It's been so long. Mio. <laughs> I want to play on my CS1 save as well. And and some other things. I have some pretty exciting things coming up also. But So here you had... Uh, yeah, the first interchange is built. And I am just unlocking the Grand Bridge. I'm complete. I'm just sort of... You know, we're gonna waste all our all our unlocking points for the Grand Bridge because I wanted the Grand Bridge. Um, I I think it's beautiful. I've I've never actually properly used it before in this game, so I'm happy to happy just get it in and starting to create like the road layout here. Uh, the road layout will be heavily gridded, which is I, I kind of wanted to do this as a as a thing. Like people know, you know. America city grid, Europe city not grid. That's not that's not the case. That's actually entirely fault, like wrong. It's just it's not that simple basically. But um, 
we have plenty of European examples of cities that have very rigid grid structures. Very, that's not the main difference, I would say, between North American and, and European cities. But uh, particularly, I'm taking inspiration from the excuse my pronunciation of Spanish Spanish here. Uh, I I example or I sample district Barcelona basically downtown Barcelona has a extremely uh, sort of regular grid pattern that that looks beautiful honestly I think I think it looks really cool and it has these large diagonals roads as well that sort of run through it and and uh, break the grid and um, it's very cool um, you should look it up absolutely and um, maybe take inspiration from it yourself um, it's a little bit tricky to get buildings uh, working on the diagonal parts of it, but I, I, I do my best anyway. <laughs> um, here I'm working on the second interchange, which is, which is a roundabout interchange. And uh, you see I've like just do a lot of terraforming before and dragging out the roads and... Uh, I, I've got this down pretty good. Like, it's pretty efficient when I do it like my way. I didn't cut out a lot of footage from this first part, so... Um, Goes to so goes to show for something. It's it's more of the later parts that are become more complicated when we start zoning and uh, the the sort of quasi detailing, I guess. I was also moving the power lines, if you notice that, because I realized the power lines were in the way for some of these projects I want to do. So I moved them underground, and when I did that. I started terraforming and I noticed that, oh, it won't let me terraform because there's power lines underground. So I had to, like, it, it just move them another time. So it's actually, oh, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, kind of painful. I should also say, like, huge thanks to Slay3K for the, the second part uh, of this build because he left us off with a really good budget, like a lot of money. I kind of ruin it a little bit. I think I maybe get back to... Um, like fixing it uh, with some policies so so we actually um, in the later parts but for this part I'm just like I have lots of points to unlock stuff I'm just unlocking like crazy I am spending the money I'm spending the budget on these expensive projects and uh, yeah very happy that I was able to do that because otherwise it would have been a little bit a little bit boring <laughs> for me trying to trying to figure out how to play the game you know I could probably figure that out also, but yeah. I I'm very, very very thankful for the setup anyway that I got for this. And uh, it's kind of funny because uh, Slay's build is on the other side of the river, but Sardis build is very close to, like, I'm, I'm sort of basically just uh, attaching my build to his build. And I think that was really fun, like, to see the road pattern and like, you know what, I'm going to extend this road and I'm going to extend that road like to sort of make them blend together as as good as possible, and I think that was re that was really fun. Like how how you can sort of see they are the same city. They are I mean they are connected, but they're very different in in their style. So um, that was a really fun part of this, and a really fun part in general, like of playing like this uh, collaboratively and multiplayer. So the reason why this is. Uh, it, I've done. I've actually joined the Five Builders One City uh, the last season as well when we were playing City Skylines One, and uh, that was also really fun. I built a harbor marina, um, but it was a lot more work to set up everything and make everything work. It was actually kind of uh, stress, like really stressful. Like I I spent way too much time trying to fix mods and stuff like that. So. I'm really excited just like grabbing the save and loading into it like there was no <laughs> uh, you know you know me guys like I'm oh no mods no mods are oh, good um, but it, it made it really easy to do the sharing of save games and just plug and play so I encourage you all like if you have some friends you ha you play this game with and you want to like you could try to do the same thing unfortunately we don't have the proper multiplayer support which i i would have been a huge fan of honestly that i think that would have been just legendary but um at least for now as we don't have all that many mods and uh, all that many things that can mess up i think uh, just try to play collaboratively with your friends um, 
and see if see if you like it. It's a great opportunity to try it now anyway. Before everybody gets hooked on the <laughs> on the mods, you know. So yeah, that was my short uh, short rant about that. And this is um, I don't know if that's a rant. That's not a rant. That's my short um, my short talk about that. My TED my TED talk. Uh, playing with friends is more fun. Um, yeah, making the final interchange now. Thought for a second, maybe roundabout. And I think actually, in retrospect, roundabout would have been better. But I, I'd have to redo some things, so I just decided to, nah, not roundabout. Um, yeah, as I said, like these interchanges, I, I kind of got them down. I can do them pretty quickly now, and uh, it makes me really happy. But... Um, they take a little bit more effort than uh, than I would have preferred. Like may maybe there's some parts of it I would have uh, preferred be a little bit easier. And here you can see me like extending uh, some of the roads from Sardis build, like in just making a straight line out, so you s you can sort of tell that they are definitely connected. And uh, tying like just into uh, the stuff we already got on the map. That was like really fun. And uh, this is also like going to be kind of a start of the of the grid, I guess. Yeah, there you go. It would be so great if there was a feature or eventually a mod that um, made sure that you can sort of drag a road straight from point to point without it following the terrain. I know that mods for City Skylines One kind of did that, but. That's that's one of my my uh, most uh, wanted uh, mods I think right now. And here you can see I'm adding a train station. So um, the idea is I know that Sardis had a part where uh, he thought that here could be, we could put a train station here. Uh, I tried to account for that so so that it it could eventually like become a network. But I think this is a great spot for train station. Because it's kind of in between our two builds. It's connected, it's close to that uh, large forested area, which is actually a... I kind of make it into a park, I don't know if that was the intention, but... For now at least it's a huge sort of city park. And it's kind of in between our uh, both builds, so it sort of serves both areas for now. There's no trains running, there is no... Um, I, I had to build the... the the train depot and uh, and delete it again so we don't actually have the ability to spawn trains but eventually when we will uh, i do build out the line at least so we do have like the, the infrastructure the tracks are there we just need the <laughs> the depot and uh, and uh, to set up lines so we can get some trains in and i'm having the train line kind of go into this large tunnel and it, the tunnel is going to split up and this i put a lot of kind of thought into how to do this in a good way because tunnel entrances are uh, unfortunately not that easy to do and especially because of that uh, that thing I was mentioning with like having a network just go straight from point to point like and not follow the train like they do weird stuff a lot of the time um, they don't really behave like I want them to so I had to sort of develop a method for for, for, for doing this as, as smoothly as possible and Eventually, I think I got it pretty good. Um, it's a lot of like intermediate terraforming, and here you can see like I'm deleting the tunnel entrance and connecting another one after like terraforming some slopes around it. And but it turns out looking really good, and it wasn't all that hard. It was just like maybe one more step than I than I would have preferred. But um, yeah, so the idea is this: this train track splits up into like it's basically a T or a freeway junction. Uh, one sort of track following the river up and the other one sort of um, is it upstreams I don't know if it's upstreams or I think it's upstreams yeah and the other one like approaching a bridge over the other side and this is not yeah I don't know I'm not super happy eventually how this bridge turns out to be honest so please don't judge um, but there's going to be a bridge over to the other side so I figured now that I'm doing all this train stuff, I kind of need to. So I'm going to do a little bit of train line on the wrong side of the river just to connect it up with the train line that, that uh, enters the 
enters our own tiles there, so. Here, you can see, I, I realize, yeah, we need some more tiles. <laughs> I'm trying that my, my best to, like, do a very proper slope and proper grade for these train lines. It's not, it's not easy, um... It's not easy to build train lines in real life, but it's not easy in the game either if you want to build them realistically because you can see like the straight slope here is like just it's going to be too steep. I have to actually make it do a sort of turn up up the hill so uh, so we have a more mo a gentle climb basically. So uh, I'm basing this on I think I read somewhere that the maximum grade limit for like high speed trains is like something some something like three percent. And uh, that's, of course, they also, of course, have a, a, a turning rate, a maximum turning radius, which uh, this is way, the turning radius here is much, much uh, sharper than uh, than most high speed rails would, would prefer. But it's it's something at least. Um, I, I'm, I'm just nerding a bit too much about this, but eventually I think it looks decent enough. It looks believable and... Uh, uh, it's connected so if anybody any any one of other builders uh, ends up building here and and finds this railway is in the way uh, they have my uh, full support of course to just delete it and or redo it however they however they want it I just connected it for now because I realized it would be um, it would be kind it would be kind of annoying to just make have somebody make partially a rail a rail line that goes nowhere and then uh, <laughs> then uh, ending it I suppose. <laughs> And here I am doing, I'm extending one of those uh, boulevards here uh, from Sardis build, or like the, one of the avenues, I guess, larger roads, into a key that goes under the bridge. Um, I will have a video uh, rather shortly, actually, as a like really good tutorial how to use keys um, in, in good ways, but for now, uh, my best tip is like try to remove the water temporarily by using terraforming. So I'm just damming it up. You've seen it before. Like there's plenty of other creators who've shown you this as well. But uh, it it's the best method if you don't want to use like the dev UI because we do need a slope. We we do need some kind of slope for uh, for the keys to form properly on one side. But the water will uh, force us to like make it higher than than it needs to be. And um, yeah. So deleting the deleting <laughs> deleting the water, uh, sort of terraforming out the water is is a good practice here. Also, using a wider road and downgrading it to a smaller road is an option if you're struggling to sort of get it to work. So, um, but as I said, like uh, keep an eye out for that video. It it uh, it, it might come around uh, pretty soon actually. <laughs> um, it will come around pretty soon actually. <laughs> it's already recorded and finished so. Uh, enough about that. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Just playing around with the, the different road tools. Um, I'm using continuous as my default, but sometimes when I'm connecting uh, two dead, like two ends, dead ends of roads, I really like to use the, the simple. Uh, the simple curve instead of a continuous. And I've started to use more and more of a complex curve. I didn't understand it at first, but I got more and more into it when I started using it. So I I would recommend trying it, actually. It's it's pretty useful. It, it basically, like the easiest way to explain it is like, it's an S-bend tool. Uh, it gives you one extra curve p for one segment. So your segment can basically turn twice or like have two radiuses. <laughs> um, can make a left turn and a right turn within one segment. It's super useful. And here I'm, oh, I'm kind of struggling with this. It's a, it's wonky right now. But um, I'm trying to connect, um, or like actually use the retaining wall feature for a little bit here. Um, I'm not a huge fan how this turned out, to be honest. Uh, it looked, it felt better in my head when I first envisioned it, but. Um, there's a good sort of... Oh, here you can see the complex curve in action. Yes, 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 yes. 
So the way um, the way it works though is that you can edit the terrain afterwards to either smooth out these walls, you can see it here, or just lower everything to ground level. So we can actually kind of delete it if we think it's too high. Like we can just remove it if we think it's too high and like and stuff like that. So once we have it, uh, we can kind of modify it a lot with the terraforming tools. Um, and I think that's that's a pretty neat feature um, because it kind of turns out kind of clippy and buggy by default uh, a lot of the time. So um, it's good that we have the ability to sort of get it working, get it down and then sort of smooth it out to, to our needs. This road also, I should say, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This is a kind of a dumb road. Um, I don't know if this road would exist in real life if there wasn't like another bridge maybe at this headland or like... Uh, or at this sort of uh, uh, peninsula into the river, or I don't know what you would call it—the <laughs> the opposite of a bend in the river. Um, and maybe it is. Maybe it's called a bend. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, this road doesn't make a lot of sense because it basically just connects up to the to the higher ground again here, and I'm doing that part now. But I kind of wanted it for some kind of aesthetics backdrop. Like it just felt like it felt like the right thing to do. It just felt nice. And yeah. It's good enough. It's good enough. Yeah. So I've talked about a lot of the things I had like uh, thought about uh, before this, uh, this making this video and I realized like it's kind of half we were kind of halfway through the, the video so I don't know maybe maybe my commentary is going to start uh, getting completely uh, uh, obnoxious and deranged now but uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see what I can do about it um, usually works just talking and like, like trying to explain what I'm doing on screen but I don't know if I'll be able to follow when it's when it speeds up to some of other parts but um, here I just I tried a thing and I decided to do like a very weird roundabout oh there you can see the complex curve again like look at that that's that's really 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 cool actually I really like the complex curve uh, it's complex just like me um, yeah also here I want to make a roundabout uh, with only three nodes and the way I'm doing it is I'm like extending these I'm using the sort of node the vanilla node controller trick to extend the segments going into the round, roundabout by just sort of placing up same segments over it each over each other and you can see how it kind of lets you stretch out the nodes almost it's just way too much but it kind of it kind of is a little bit wonky and i decided to redo it a little bit a few times but this is a really good trick, by the way, like extending of nodes uh, just by dragging um, dragging other networks over it is, is really neat. Uh, the sort of the fluid, the fluidity of the nodes, maybe you could say, the fluidity of the segments is, is just really useful in this game. I use it a lot anyway, and I know I'm going to keep using it and uh, yeah. And I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to hear anything about how my roundabout is not round. Um, I'm very much aware. <laughs> it's kind of a point, actually, this in this case, because I, I realized, like, looking, like, zooming out and looking at, at these kinds of uh, roundabouts, that they actually look really good, even though they, they obviously aren't round, because they create, like, this interesting contrast. Like, like, you get the idea that this probably wasn't a roundabout at some point in time. Like, maybe this was some other kind of junction, or, or maybe... Yeah, or maybe somebody, I don't even know, maybe somebody just thought it was better this way. <laughs> but it really sort of stands out and I, I really like it. And uh, here I'm connecting some more of the railways or the rail, the rail train station basically. I have some tricks to make the track connections a bit smoother. I, I, I don't know if I can sort of explain them, but you kind of see what's going on. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it's a little bit awkward, as with everything. Yeah, and 
another thing I also like to do is like, I like to do this, uh, I think it was like, I was watching like a Tom Scott video about uh, junctions being uh, dangerous when they sort of uh, have roads coming in at a weird angle. So I try to make the junction a bit more right angled and just have the, the roads coming into it turn um, into a 90 degree angle like at the last second. And that's, that's something I think adds a little bit of realism. And I do it in a few places here uh, on this build and also add some of the pre-built roundabouts um, before starting to sort of get the, the, the real grid, the big, the big grid. Now we're actually starting the, the Barcelona inspiration part here. Uh, I should say a few things about that. There's, it's not just just Barcelona for uh, inspiration, actually. It's I'm also like a little bit inspired by a place called La Plata in uh, Argentina, and I know what you mean. I know what you're gonna say. Ar Argentina doesn't. That sounds American. Um, it's not North American. Um, it is American though, but um, it it has this also extremely regular grid pattern over the over a massive scale, like probably even larger. I think it's probably even a larger grid than the Barcelona example, even though it's a smaller city. But it has a large grid and diagonal roads and it looks really fun. So La Plata, Argentina, I would recommend like uh, looking looking that up and, uh, and getting inspired if as well if you, if you want to build cities like this. Um, and I'm sure there's other examples in Europe of, of this type of uh, of this type of city plan, but um, these are my main inspirations anyway, and uh, I think I think they're, they're pretty neat. Um, I was also very close to uh, deciding, you know, this is going to be a perfectly, perfectly square grid. There's going to be no room for unsquare um, or like sort of irregularities, and like I would, I, I was going to like make sure that every sort of tile was. Uh, like fully sewnable, like or sort of there was no gaps between the sewing tiles, but I eventually abandoned that idea and, and figured out like it's going to be honestly more fun and easier this way. So I just abandoned abandoned that idea. Um, I also want to add like a really nice like sort of central uh, park district or not, not central park, but um, like a park. Uh, into the sort of center of this grid structure. Um, and uh, these diagonal roads are supposed to sort of converge on that point. That's the plan anyway. Um, I might change the park, like maybe maybe in a, uh, the next part where I get to build, uh, w whichever episode that will be, I might change it a little bit. I'm not perfectly happy with it. I think it looks good in the sort of in the context of the whole of the whole city but um, it it might it's particularly like when it comes to the trees I'm not super happy with the trees I might and the paths I think I made like just a bit too many too large paths for it to be a proper park it feels like it's more just roads uh, like zigzagging through uh, through a, uh, a forest <laughs> a little bit so I'm looking forward to coming back here and improving, improving on uh, on uh, this build, and also like seeing like the amazing creations uh, the others uh, will will come up with in the mean in the meantime. So uh, once again, the 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 link to the playlist and the other creators will be in the description. So uh, make sure to check that out and and also follow them so we, you don't miss the next part. The next part. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, should be Imperial Jedi. So Imperial Jedi uh, will have the next part in the series. And uh, I also think Imperial Jedi will be building on the other side of the river. So they might be, if, I don't I don't know, but they might build like uh, just on the other side where we uh, ended the bridge. I would be super excited to see that, but um, we'll just have to see. There's no, there's no telling what can happen. And here you can see the grid just ends when it reaches that diagonal road, which is also something that I was very close to sort of, no, everything's got to be right angles. Uh, I was very close to sort of uh, really committing on the grid. I cannot uh, stress that enough how much more of a grid it could have been. Um, 
even though this is pretty graded. But um, yeah, and here you can see also like how how interesting interestingly uh, easy it can be like just connecting diagonals like <laughs> just crossing over the roads and uh, it just works instantly. Um, huge city skylines to win, I think. I think for that part. Uh, I should also say like all of this area, it's kind of sloped. Uh, this is not a perfectly flat area in any way, and I deliberately wanted to keep it that way. I wanted it to just be built on the slope. Um, it creates some issues in some cases. Um, I have to redo some, like especially when placing larger service buildings, I have to um, sort of give them some room next to them because otherwise the parking lots would be uh, like 45 degrees uh, sloped <laughs> and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Yeah, here we're here. You can see the sort of this is going to be the park uh, thing, and I am crisscrossing it like crazy. There's just way too many things going into the center. I think, in retrospect, I should have done most of this using the small pavement paths instead, and maybe one large uh, pedestrian road, possibly, and maybe like the roundabout in the center to signify some kind of square or something. But um, yeah. As I said, might be that might be uh, we might revisit that and fix it. Um, yeah. Also, these uh, these uh, really cursed six-way junctions um, probably not great for traffic, uh, but it's fine. These these aren't supposed to be like large through roads, so uh, I think it's fine. Um, and that brings me into the the Barcelona discussion, I guess, because. Barcelona has this thing called super blocks that you'll also have to look that up because I don't actually know what it is. But in my memory, the super blocks are something uh, related to uh, creating a larger block consisting of, of several smaller blocks with like one way roads and, and stuff like that specifically designed to to prohibit through traffic. You're not you're not able to go through the block. You can go into the block, like with your uh, with your vehicle, with your car, uh, and access the things inside of it. But you can't go through it. So there's like a elaborate one-way system. And I wanted to experiment with that here. I don't think I show it in the video, but I did set up a few one-way roads to create a sort of super block system. Like, uh, but more than anything, just to test it. It's definitely possible in this game. I know that I know that much. Uh, you can you can do many things like that, but. Uh, yeah, um, and here I am kind of creating the. I I have this idea that this was supposed to be a very dense district underneath the bridge, like a dense district with like row houses and stuff like that, like old workers' quarters, like um, kind of maybe a little bit inspired by Porto in uh, in Portugal, um, kind of how the the city is built on a very sloped area, like and you have these roads winding up and down and and. Um, and such, but it didn't turn out all that great when I tried to zone it. So I actually cut back a lot on the zoning and eventually um, just made it into a park instead, or like just made it mostly into a park instead. Um, I we could have done it. I think row houses are pretty suitable for that kind of thing. Like if you keep the so the sizes of them very small, but um, yeah just didn't didn't fit uh just didn't fit my aesthetics for this uh, this particular occasion so maybe we'll have to do that another day yeah i i should also say i am kind of recording this in a little bit of a hurry before the christmas uh the christmas uh, getaway or like before going away and uh, visiting uh, family and such for christmas so i'm sorry if it feels a bit rushed i really didn't want to rush i I had a lot of plans for this build, and I think I actually achieved most of them anyway, but uh, might feel a little bit uh, rushed for commentary. I, I've dedicated to just having it one one recording, and uh, that's going to be it. Um, so uh, let's hope it doesn't go, go wrong for me. I feel like it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. Uh, and here you can see me actually dedicating that large forestry area by the train station um, into a park, or like dedicating, making it into a park. And the way I like to make it into a park is just 
place paths and uh, sometimes also trees. Um, but I also figured this large roundabout thing would be a really nice sort of centerpiece. So I just create a small road that goes in and uh, provides it access and figure out, I can actually, if I'm uh, very uh, thorough, I can actually connect those paths up with uh, pedestrian paths. So it looks like built in. And my idea is this would be like the sort of the unity park for like the, like because it it's right at the border between me, mine and Sardis's builds. So it's like the, it's like, it's a perfectly symbolic place for uh, for something like this. Uh, it's like the Unity Park or the Unity Fountain or something like that. And uh, I, I, th I thought it was a fun, it was a neat thing. And it looks really good as well. I really like how it uh, how it sits like at the inside of the angle between the roads, just like at the edge of the park. So it's like, it's going to be like a large public space uh, at the entrance to the park. Uh, eventually, like maybe if, if this place gets like a lot of public transit, which is something I kind of wanted. I had this idea of maybe doing public transit, like maybe adding some metros and trams, but I never actually got around to it. So um, eventually this might, I think that roundabout would be like some kind of transit hub. Uh, like there would be a transit hub near there, near there. Or at the very least some kind of transit stop. <laughs> Obviously, the train station is also a transit hub. That probably makes more sense, so... Yeah. There's... This is probably, I think, the best way to make parks so far, until until we get something, like, stuff that's, uh, that's similar to how Park Life uh, DLC in CS1 uh, gave us options to create, like, buildings um, anywhere on the path networks. It's basically just creating paths. Just create paths and plant trees accordingly, and then, and then call it call it a park. I think it looks good. Uh, it passes my tests anyway. But I mean, of course, it would be very nice if we could do much more. Like, and of course, like water features and like you know proper like more detailing with benches and and flower uh, flower beds and fountains and and all that stuff. Um, I think for now it's fine. I hope we get more soon. <laughs> but, um, and there's not a lot of like planning going into this. I'm just like, you know what? This is a straight path going from that point to that point. This is a straight path that goes from that point to that point. This is a squib, um, S shaped path that goes left, right, and, and center. So just a mix of organic and straight lines, I think is, is makes your, makes your parks look better. And here you can see the mass zoning starting. Um, most of this is going to be low density residential for now, but it will probably be, uh, and I mean, it's prepared to be upgraded uh, to medium density if needed. Uh, in real life, the Barcelona inspiration is definitely uh, medium density or even high density in some, in some cases. Um, so it, it has the possibility to just add add density as needed but for now our demand is almost like entirely low density so we'll keep it like that uh, and I'm also trying out the district tool I think for the first time in this game um, I don't I don't think I've you placed any districts before and I actually forget to name them uh, let me know if you guys have any suggestions for these district names and I'll get around naming them uh, the next time around uh, for now I only have one district name that I it was kind of, it's kind of dumb. You're, you're, you're gonna laugh. Uh, it's called, um, it's this district by the bridge. I call it, I think I call it uh, Pont, Pont Sink. Pont Sink. Because it's bridge five. It's a like homage to, uh, to Paris, where I think, I mean, and plenty other places, but uh, the numbered bridges of Paris there is a uh, there is a number uh, number five bridge. I, I mean, I assume there is a number five bridge, but uh, there is a number nine bridge, Pont Neuf. Uh, so I kind of made a, it's a homage to that. And uh, but of course, we're actually six builders now, so uh, it, it kind of doesn't make sense either. And here you can see the final build actually uh, of this uh, this uh, video starting out, and it's a castle build. I wanted to make a custom castle using uh, uh, 
roads uh, and the retaining walls. And this is something I saw on Reddit a long time ago. Uh, somebody do in City Skylines 2. Uh, user no for real what. I'll link the Reddit post as well so you can see it. This is not my original idea or anything like that. Uh, this is me stealing from, from Reddit. But such a great idea of using the paths like this and doing the roundabouts to create the... Uh, what do you call it? The, I guess the battlements? Or towers. Towers is probably a better word. And it looks really cool. Um, I did do my one change to it. I added that, um, you see there's like these pre-existing ruins. I added that by basically just uh, relocating it. I, I found a, a ruin. You can't place them in the vanilla game, but you can relocate them without any sort of cost or any sort of limits. So. I just found one even outside of our uh, owned tiles and just moved it over here to the hill. So it's the centerpiece of the castle. That's the that's the sort of uh, pre-existing ruin thing. It just got moved over from outside. I, I feel like I stole it almost. Like it, it's it's kind of funny how that works, but I think it looks good also. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna apologize for stealing that castle. No, nope, it was it looks better here. So. So I'm just basically giving the castle like an outer walls. So that's that's essentially what's going on here. And I'm trying to create the walls so they're not like perfectly straight, so they're a little bit more organic. And I think it's decent. It's a this was very fast to build. And uh, if you want this, I can really recommend trying to do something like this yourself because this was really fun. Um, and not all that hard to be honest. <coughs> Uh, the main way to make the, the walls is just to raise the, like first of all, like maybe edit the train a little bit and then just raise the road up to 7.5 meters. Um, around 7.5 meters uh, creates the walls underneath. But also uh, creates automatic bridges if you're uh, dragging it out over a, another road. So 7.5 meters is the sweet spot. And I think that's a pretty realistic height for a a castle wall also without of course being an expert on that I'm not an expert on anything I'm talking about but but you you guys know that by now so and um, yeah I'm adding some paths around it because the castle by itself doesn't really doesn't feel like it completes the area like it it feels like decently scaled and, and dominating the, the high ground and all that but it doesn't complete the area I feel like there should be some kind of path just going around it so that's what I'm that's what I'm adding adding here finally and uh, yeah looks pretty good and here I'm actually like just going around and looking for other buildings to steal and uh, I think I find an old mill house that I can just steal and put over here so ah uh, yeah and the final part of uh, the video is just like, I cut out a lot of this to be honest, but I do a lot of tree work. Um, some trees I just place like in a, in a line like this. I like to use the poplar trees uh, like in these very narrow areas. Works really well because they don't have a large hitbox. Uh, the pine trees are also good for this, so. but. Um, and uh, then I'm just mixing it in with just the, the brush, setting the brush to a large area and just dragging it over uh, the whole city and, and like seeing what kind of trees can spawn. But And that's going to be it. Please enjoy the cinematics. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and also checking out the other creators. The playlist and the links, everything will be in the description. I hope to see you soon again. It's been too long. Oh, and I almost forgot. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, happy holidays. I'll see you guys next year.